Dr. Margaret Somerville is one of Canada's leading ethicists in the field of medicine and science and was the founding director of the McGill Centre for Medicine, Ethics and Law in Montreal. She is here to talk to us today about a subject very close to our hearts, the right of people of faith to have a voice in the public square. Welcome. Thank you, Cheryl. You know, I was inspired to invite you here because I read one of your articles, and actually it's over a year old, so it's, it's funny that I ran across it, but it was entitled, Judge Me by My Ideas, Not My Religion. Mm -hmm. Can you just tell us, why did you write that article? What inspired it? <laughs> well, somebody phoned me, uh, and no, it's actually a reporter, who said to me, um, have you seen what they say about you in Wikipedia? And I said, no, I mean, I, I don't look at that, you know? And so she said, well, I think you'd better have a look at it. And when I looked at it, I really couldn't believe it. I mean, it was, it was completely defamatory. And um, uh, a lot of the uh, comment was uh, to the uh, sort of that I must be religious or I wouldn't have the views that I have. Now, whether I'm religious or not, I think is a personal matter. Uh, but I think that the, the whole idea that if you label someone as religious and dismiss them, which is what happens to a lot of religious people, that was what I was really going on about. I mean, it, it, because everybody's got a belief system. That's yeah. part of being human. And what you say should reflect your true beliefs. I mean, you're being a hypocrite if it doesn't. And to simply think that... Uh, that there is an immediate dismissal of any position that might have any coincidence or even be deliberately based on a religious belief, then I, that was what I was on about, saying that that's wrong, they shouldn't do that. Yeah, they were basically saying you were a spokesperson for the Catholic yeah. Church and, you know, you called it a label and dismiss strategy. Yeah. You said that people use that so they don't actually have to address your argument. I love that. Tell me about that because really it's just a way that you don't have to, like, reason with you. Yeah, yeah, well, that, well that's what it is. It's instead of addressing the arguments that you put forward about a certain topic, whether it's euthanasia or abortion or stem cell research or um, access to health care or whatever it might be, they say, well, the only reason you think that is because you're religious, that that's a religious belief, that religion has no place in the public square, therefore you've got no right to a voice in the public square. And so that is label as religious and dismiss. Instead of saying, well, you know, what is your, what's your problem with euthanasia? Why do you think it's a bad idea? Mm -hmm. So then when I say something like, well, we shouldn't have doctors killing people, um, then they get terribly upset. I mean, that's, I'm not allowed to use the word killing. So all of this is, is tactics to promote a certain value base. And it's fair enough. I mean, that's those people's values base and they've got the right to promote it. But the problem is that this idea of um, secularism, which is different from secular, a secular society is one that is not based on religion, but does not exclude religion. It's got a valid, it's a valid voice in the public square. Mm. Secularism is when you try to exclude religion and, and say it's not a valid voice, it's got no right to be heard in the public square. And a very uh, powerful example of that was the uh, Charter of Quebec Values, when, mm -hmm. you know, when Quebec had this semi unbrilliant idea that it was going to prohibit anybody from having any religious symbols except for tiny tiny little things and they drew little diagrams of how big the symbol was allowed to be and uh, that was if they were in the, any form of public service including being a nurse or a physician in a hospital or a professor in a university and so we all went to work with um, wearing um, hijabs. <laughs> There is a form of protest. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, you said about this, the, the Quebec Charter values, it said that it affirms the values of state secularism and religious neutrality. And you said that's actually not possible. They're actually in opposition to each other. What do you mean by that? Well, secularism is a religion. It's a belief system. And it's a belief system that excludes religion. And religion is a religion. and <laughs> It's a belief system. And it's a system that includes religion. And what we have to have in multicultural, diverse societies, and ultimately our, our globe is our society, is we have to have mutual respect and a big emphasis on that word mutual, mm -hmm. that I won't exclude your... I mean, there are some beliefs or 
some, not so much beliefs, because I think people can believe what they want, but there are some practices and acts that we should never approve. But other than that, if somebody believes something and it doesn't harm other people, and that's how they want to act, and uh, then I think they have the right to do that. And in fact, our Charter of Rights says that. It says you've got freedom of thought, speech, religion, uh, conscience. That's a big issue at the moment. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've got all these poor doctors who are absolutely freaking out because they're being told that they've got to do things that are contrary to their conscience. That's right. And yeah. again, they're getting labelled as religious. Ontario, in Ontario and in Saskatchewan, yeah. the College of Physicians and Surgeons is, is basically writing a policy that's saying if you don't want to perform an abortion or euthanasia or anything that violates your conscience, you either have to refer or in cases of an emergency, you actually have to do it even if it's against your yeah. conscience. And that's really unprecedented in Canada I think and the, the U.S. I think the big issue there is the referral because I don't think they would, I mean, in an emergency, that is, and that's very rare. That's a different situation. But I think uh, what the Ontario new guidelines say is that you have to provide what the guidelines call an effective referral mm. and what that means is you have to send the person to somebody that you know will do the procedure that you think is immoral or unethical and the problem with that from an ethics point of view is that that's what's called complicity it's a bit like you know if you put Jewish people on a train to go to Auschwitz you know, you were complicit in what happened to them, that's even right. though you didn't carry it out mm -hmm. in Auschwitz. So that's the same sort of thing. There's a lot less freedom, I know, for people of faith. And I, but I think you made a great point, because when we're talking about our fight to have a valid voice in the public square, I think as people of faith, we also have to realize that other we have to give the same freedom to other viewpoints. I mean, that is the foundation of democracy. That's, you know, what we based our, our, our culture on in North America is the idea that everyone has a voice and a place. Yeah. Yeah. in this culture. Yeah, and the, those, all of those voices have to be respected and they have to be heard, but it doesn't necessarily mean which one we're going to follow. And I, I think the other thing that's extremely important is that perhaps the more strongly we hold our own views and values, the more careful we have to be about how we present those because you can't force them down the throat of the other person right. and you can't use a language that alienates the other person. So what we have to do, we have to be persuasive that what we're arguing for is best for everybody. And we do have to make compromises. I mean, one of the compromises often is between respect for individual autonomy and letting people do what they want to do uh, and the common good. What do we need, what values do we need to uphold to ensure that we have a society in which reasonable people would want to live? Mm -hmm. And very importantly, it's not just present society. I often ask people to think about how, what sort of a society do they think their great, great, great grandchildren will have if we do this now, whatever this might be. And so I, I think we've come to realise that our physical ecosystem, you know, our, our physical world is not indestructible and we can do a lot of things that might, you know, damage that irreparably. We've also got what I call a metaphysical ecosystem, the collection of values, attitudes, beliefs, stories in that on which we found our society and we share those values. And I think we're in grave danger of irre uh, irreparably destroying that. And so I think that what we've got to talk about is not just what do we want, what does an individual want, but what values do we want to keep in place and protect and hand on to future generations. Mm -hmm. It's a bit like our, our values genes. You know, we hand on our physical genes and we hand on these other genes as well. You know, what you're talking about is so, I think, unusual these days because what, what I find is, you know, with the Charter of Rights and Freedoms and so many people in this generation 
thinking about what are my rights. My rights are important, I get my rights. And it's almost that spirit of entitlement. I think back to the previous generation, they always thought about what was good for the community. They were much more community focused. When you become rights focused, I, I can't actually have all, all my rights. And neither can you, because there's gonna come a day when my rights <laughs> fight with your rights, and who wins that right yeah, thing, you know? And yeah. if we always are thinking of ourselves, then yeah. we're not thinking about that common good. I don't think a lot of people think Cheryl, about what you're talking about. I think that, uh, the, I think the charter has caused this, and the charter's done a lot of good because it's made us focus on what should be the rights of individual people. And the charter is essentially a legal document that protects the individual from the wrongful use of power by the state. And we need to think about that. But I think we've gone, just as you said, I think we've gone overboard. And we've, we now have what I call radical autonomy. That is that an individual's exercise of autonomy, their right to choice, choice is the word that describes autonomy, mm -hmm. is overriding uh, values that are enormously important. I think we have to uh, accommodate to the greatest degree that we can how what everybody feels about these issues at the same time i think it's enormously important not for just for the sake of peace uh, or not just for the sake of not having people getting mad at you to go along with things that you believe are inherently wrong mm -hmm. we shouldn't do that we just mustn't do that well, you know, this is an ongoing conversation. Just recently, um, MP James Lenny, he left the Conservative caucus just because he wanted to be able to address what he feels like is the persecution of people of faith in, in, uh, in the media and in politics and that, that lack of voice. He specifically talked about the College of Physicians and Surgeons, that issue. He talked about Trinity Western University was trying to open a law school and came under great fire. He said Bank of Montreal was discriminating against Christian lawyers. And so he, he was worried about the fact that if he spoke up as a Conservative caucus member, that his party would pay the price but he in his own conscience wanted that freedom to speak up and you know you gotta admire him for taking the stand but I think there's that feeling like a lot of people of faith don't want to speak into the public sphere because they feel like they're going to be called a bigot or a hate monger or stupid or just religious you know that label and dismiss like you're just a religious freak but we do have a voice we have something to say and we're part of this society mm -hmm. everybody's part of the society and we should be able to have a voice and a role in it yep I agree. Well, thank you so much for coming. We so appreciate your work and we appreciate you speaking up for, you know, everyone being able to have a voice regardless of your um, religion, that's, or your ideology. That's the basis of democracy. And that if is. we lose that, we're in big trouble. Oh, well, thank you so much for Thanks, coming. Thanks,